morning Wi-Fi land all over the world today. We greet you in the name of the Savior of sinners, the Lord Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. We hope he's yours. He certainly can be. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. So last week we talked about the law of the leper and the day of his cleansing. We talked about a, a sacrifice that was made up of two birds. One bird was killed in an earthen vessel, representing the, the life of our Lord Jesus here in this world. And the second bird was sprinkled with the blood of the first, and it was let go. Uh, the bird of heaven, our Lord Jesus, and, and his resurrection. Praise the Lord. This week, I'd like to talk about Naaman. Uh, Naaman was a man that, his name means very pleasant. Well, everything was very pleasant for Naaman, as there are, as it is for a lot of people in this world. But there was one thing that was a problem. He was a leper. He was the captain of the host of Syria. He was a man of great achievement. He had character, honorable and trustworthy. He was brave. But underneath all his awards and all his accolades, he was a leper. And he pictures for us, the Lord Jesus teaches us in Luke fact, uh, chapter 4, that there were many lepers in Israel in the time of Elisha the prophet. But none of them were healed. Only Naaman, who was a Syrian, only Naaman was healed. So God is saying that salvation is not for the Jew only, but it's for all men. So Naaman represents the fact that all men of sin come short of the glory of God, and all men need salvation in Christ. Amen. Well, fortunately for Naaman, uh, uh, God had worked in his providence that there would be a little Israeli maid, a young woman that had been taken captive by one of... Uh, um, Naaman's raids in Israel and she was a servant at his house and her heart was in love with the Lord uh, with God uh, her heart was open in faith she had not allowed an unforgiving spirit uh, to enter her heart uh, she cared she loved uh, Naaman and his household so she told Naaman's wife that there was a prophet in Israel that could heal Naaman of his leprosy well uh, this young woman, she was more than a conqueror. She was like in Romans 8, 37. She was an overcomer uh, by her faith, 1 John 5, 4. This was a young lady that is an incredible woman that is hardly even mentioned in the Bible, but you can be sure in heaven she has great honor there because she was a woman of faith. So the king of Israel receives from the king of Syria, the king of Syria sends 10 talents of silver, 6,000 pieces of gold, along with, Eli along with uh, Naaman, that he might be healed of his leprosy. Well, kings think that they can take care of everything. You know, people, great people of the world think that they have all the answers. Uh, judging by the way that some people uh, 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 in high places act today, I think my wife could do a better job. But in any event, there's a servant that hears of Naaman's problem. And that servant sends a message to Elisha the prophet. And Elisha the prophet then sends a message to the king to send him to me. Now, isn't that wonderful? God works behind the scenes. He always has someone, some of his people, uh, unknown people that are working, even this servant that was in the king's palace and sends the message to Elisha. So uh, Naaman it then comes uh, to Elisha. And Naaman, of course, expects that he's going to be treated uh, with honor and dignity. But Elisha doesn't even come out of the house to greet him. He sends a servant out, and the message infuriates Naaman. The message was, go and wash in the waters of the Jordan, dip yourself seven times. And Naaman was furious because he thought that, you know, the prophet would come out and and uh, there would be some great ceremony over him and, and uh, that he would be healed in some grand way. Uh, not to go wash in the, in the Jordan River. And, and so he, he's going to leave. He's in great anger. I mean, he's in wrathful and he's leaving. But then God has another one of his, uh, one of his men there, a servant of Naaman. And, the, and he reasons with his master and says, listen, if the prophet had asked you to do some great thing, wouldn't you have done it? Why not wash in the river? And so he won Naaman's heart. Once again, God speaks to some lowly person who is great in the eyes of heaven. And so Naaman goes and he dips, not once, not twice, not th seven times. But in order for him to do it, he has to expose himself. He has to take off all that, that, that uh, garments that, that covered his leprosy, all the awards that he had as that uh, a great captain. And he had to expose his sin, as it were, because uh, um, leprosy is a picture of sin. And so he exposes himself. And listen, my friend, if you want to be saved, you've got to admit, you've got to confess your sin. You, you've got to expose it. You can't hide it. 
Uh, God knows uh, what you've hidden in the closets of your own, dark, dark closets of your own heart. You've got to come clean before him. So Naaman pictures for us as he goes down that seventh time and he comes up and he's healed from the leprosy. He pictures new birth because new birth is by water. Jesus said in John 3, if you're born of water and of the spirit, born of water, that's the word of God. And the spirit makes the word of God alive. First, first Peter 1, I think 23, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but by the word of God, which liveth. So it's the living word of God that brings new birth, that washes away the old nature and brings a new nature. And that's what a sinner needs. He doesn't need to be reformed. He needs to be redeemed. He needs to be brought to God by faith in Christ. Trust in Christ today. If you're a sinner still in your sin, hiding your leprosy, hiding your sin, come clean and trust Christ as Lord and Savior. Amen.